5 to 11 servings of bread, cereal, or rice. What? 3 to 5 of vegetables and 4 of fruits. Is pst, their antioxidants and fiber help you to digest. McFarlane Burnett, who's an Australian scientist, came up with a pretty interesting theory in the 1950s. And this theory was all about the clonal selection theory. Now, we talked about the first and second line defense in previous videos, so you can guess that we're going to be talking about the third line defense in this video. So, the clonal selection theory is all about the third line defense. And what this clonal, the clonal selection theory actually talks about is the idea that you have these special type of white blood cells, which we call the lymphocytes. So, the lymphocytes are these special types of blood cells. If you can see here, we have different types of white blood and red blood cells. So we've got the erythrocytes, which are the red blood cells. We don't need to talk about those in the video. The platelets, which are, again, they're just there to cl um, clot and help wound healing. We don't need to talk about those in the video. Then we're left with these. These are the white blood cells leftovers. These two have to do with allergies. You should, don't have to generally know these. These are allergies. So if you have an allergy, we have these which are the basophiles and the eosinophiles, which are responsible for the allergic reaction. And then you have the neutrophiles and the, the monocytes. These are examples of phagocytes. And remember in the last video we talked about phagocytosis. So phagocytes, so these are part of our second line defense, our nonspecific second line defense, the, the ones which do phagocytosis, the neutrophiles and the monocytes. Examples of monocytes would be the macrophages, which are also the ones which eat and consume the actual foreign antigens and, and bacteria. And then we have the lymphocytes. These are the ones we have to talk about in this video. Lymphocytes are your third line of defense. So these lymphocytes are a special type of white blood cells. And what makes them special is that they're actually specific. So the other two, first and second line of defense, was non-specific. This is a specific type of defense mechanism. What that means is that this lymphocyte will only target one specific type of pathogen. So if it be a one specific type of virus, for example, the HIV virus or the cold virus, or one different type of bacteria, for example, the tetanus bacteria, they only target one specific type. So that's how the lymphocytes are different to all the other ones. You can imagine that the phagocytes, which are the non-specific ones, they're like the police force, which just basically, whenever there's any crime, they'll come and, and check that the crime is under control. Whereas lymphocytes, they'll only be called when there's a certain type of criminal around. So for example, if the lymphocyte would be targeting terrorists, then the lymphocyte would be the anti-terrorist squad, which only comes when there's actually terrorists around. Now, how does this actually work? So how this name, or this, why this name clonal selection theory is important, is clonal refers to making clones of oneself. So clones, du duplicates, doubles. Selection means it will select one certain lymphocyte and make clones of that. Now what I mean by that is, for example here, we have these different types of lymphocytes. You can imagine we've got lymphocyte A, lymphocyte X, lymphocyte Y, lymphocyte B, and we have only one of them making clones. You can see here, clonal selection, this one has been selected, and this one will make clones of itself. Now why does it make clones? Well, this is lymphocyte X, and lymphocyte X came in contact with antigen X. So, for example, let's say this is maybe, this might be the flu virus. So this might be the flu virus. So this actual lymphocyte, which is this one here, would be the lymphocyte which is dealt, deals only with the flu virus. Whenever the flu, flu virus comes, it can find it and basically duplicate and then kill it. All right, so that's the idea of this clone selection theory. One antigen triggers one specific type of lymphocyte. And that lymphocyte then makes more copies of itself. So the clonal selection theory, which was proposed by McFarlane and Burnett, means that a certain specific type of antigen triggers either T or B lymphocytes. There's two different types of lymphocytes, and we're going to cover them much more in, in this video and future videos. Two different types, so they will be triggered by a specific type of antigen. What happens then is these, amp these lymphocytes, they clone to make copies of themselves, and these many copies will then start attacking a specific type of antigen. So for example, we said the flu virus. If the flu virus is the antigen, then these lymphocytes will kill the flu virus, but only the flu virus. It won't touch the HIV virus or the tetanus bacteria. It will only target that one specific type of pathogen. So that's the third line of defense. The actual point says identify the components 
of the immune response, including the antibodies, the T cells, and the B cells. So again, this is the so the immune response in this case is all about the third line of defense, the specific type of immune response. So we've got these two different types of cells. We mentioned the T cells and the B cells. I'll talk about the T cells first. So the T cells, a different word for the T cells or how they operate is the cell mediated immunity. And I'm gonna it's gonna make sense in a second why it's called cell mediated immunity. Because how they operate is let's say this is a T cell here. This is a T cell. And you can see it has a receptor. And this receptor allows it to find things which fit into its actual receptor. So let's say we have this virus here, and it's going to see can this part of the antigen fit into its receptor? If it does, that means it's the actual antigen it wants to kill. So in this case, it has like a round thingy, and the round thingy would fit perfectly into the actual receptor of the T lymphocyte, which means the T lymphocyte would get activated. It would make copies of itself, and those copies would then rush into the blood and find anything else which is, has the sa same antigen. And how it actually work is once they have identified a pathogen, they would move closer, hook on, they hook on to it, and when they hook on to it, they basically inject chemicals into them. That's why it's called cell-mediated immunity, because it's direct. Right? You actually have the cell itself, which kills them directly, which is why it's called cell-mediated immunity. So you can see here, this is our T cell. And you use black. This is our T lymphocyte, and this would actually be a bad pathogen, so whatever it's targeting, the pathogen is targeting. And you can see it hooks on. And once it hooks on, it's going to put chemicals into it, which will kill it. There's a diagram here of it as well. You have the T cell, it hooks on and it sends these chemicals in into the body of the cell, the, the bad pathogen it targets, the specific type of pathogen, and thereby killing the actual pathogen. And so that's how T cells work, especially the T killer cells. And this is actually, I mean, there's so many names to remember. This is the T killer cell, the one that actually kills is the T killer cells. We're only going to cover the T killer cell in detail in this video. We're going to cover the other ones in the next video, because that's one that you have to cover it in. But the T killer cell does exactly this. It, it goes hooks on and it kills the pathogen. And what do the T cells do? Well, the T cells produce toxins, and these toxins can kill specific type of viruses if they are designed to kill viruses. If they are designed to kill bacteria, a specific type of bacteria, then they can kill bacteria. They can also kill transplanted organ tissue, which is bad, which is why we have problems. They can kill cancer cells, and they can kill protozoan and fungi. So that's what the T cells do. Now, what the B cells do, another word for the B cells is the antibody-mediated or humoral immunity. So as opposed to the cell-mediated immunity for T cells, they have a different sort of immunity response. And what, the reason why they have this response is because they work slightly differently. So for example, let's say we have this down here as our virus here. A specific type of virus might be the flu virus, and this might be the actual B lymphocyte, which is designed to kill the flu virus. So what we would do first, it would try to find anything that it fits its receptor. In this case, it fits, which means this is the actual antigen it's meant to kill. What it will do next, it will actually produce a plasma cell. So it won't directly kill it, like the T cell does. It will produce a plasma cell. So this is a plasma cell I'm, I'm drawing. This comes out of the actual B cell. So you can see the picture here. There's something coming out of it. What's coming out of it is the B cell. So this is the B cell. Uh, sorry, this is the plasma cell that's coming out of the B cell. And then what the, the plasma cell itself produces something else. The plasma cell produces these antigens. So you can imagine them to be small little hooks. They're actually protein, they're made of protein. They're also called immunoglobins, these antigens, uh, these antibodies. And what they do is they hook on to the actual pathogens it's designed to kill, and thereby deactivating it. They deactivate it, which means that it can't do, any, can't do its bad job anymore, evil job, and thereby becomes immobilized. So these are your antibodies that are being produced, and the antibodies are being produced by the plasma cells, and the plasma cells themselves are being produced by the B cells. So the B cells produce plasma cells that produce antibodies. Now these antibodies will target specific type of viruses, bacteria, or toxins produced by bacteria. So for example, if this is a bacteria, a virus, if this is not a virus but a bacteria, and let's say because these bacteria will harm the actual body by producing chemicals, toxins, 
these toxins can also be deactivated. So these toxins themselves might have a receptor, which means they can also be deactivated by the actual antibodies, which means the bacteria will go away and so will their toxins. And this is just a quick overview of what we're going to talk about in the next video. We're going to talk about T suppressor cells, T helper cells, and T killer cells, which we talked about in this video, and plasma cells and B cells a bit more. I'll quickly go over this top point again. Identify components of the immune response. So we need to talk about antibodies, T cells, and B cells. The T cells, were, there's four different types, but the ones we cover in this video are the T killer cells, and it's called the cell, immu immediate, cell mediated immunity. And the reason why is because it hooks on to the pathogen, directly injects chemicals into it, which will kill it. And the T cells produce these toxins, which will kill the viruses, bacteria, transplanted organs, cancer cells, and protozoan and fungi. But remember, they will only target one specific type. So for example, if this is the flu virus here, if this is the flu virus, and there were another virus, let's say this is the HIV virus, that has different types of receptors. Let's say they have a square receptor. Then the T cell won't harm this one. It won't do anything about this one because its receptors won't fit onto it. So it will only work on the ones which actually fit onto it. So that's how the T cells work. And the B cells are the antibody mediated humoral immunity response. What they do is they produce these plasma cells whenever they come in contact with the antigen they're meant to kill. And these plasma cells will produce the antibodies which will then deactivate the actual, so the antibodies deactivate the actual pathogen and also the chemicals that they produce. The B cells target the viruses, the bacteria and the toxins produced by, by the bacteria itself. But yeah, hopefully that was useful. But you need to know a bit more about this video and the next video. So these are probably the, the biggest, these two videos are probably the most information rich videos of this module. I'd say this video and the next video. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.